Well, welcome to the uh, worked problems portion of this lesson about uh, elastic collisions. So you may recall from the simulation that we have a block which I'm calling M1 and it's moving to the right at 3 meters per second and it strikes a block, a stationary block, which I'm calling M2 and after the collision uh, stuff happens. So we're now going to calculate what we saw in the in the simulation and you're about to discover that these calculations are not fun. So uh, let's get at it. So the first thing I need to do is give you the formula for kinetic energy. So you may be using E sub K as the symbol for kinetic energy, or you may be using KE. So it's, I think it's pretty common these days to use E sub K. And uh, just trust me, or trust somebody, kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Now, at some point in, later on in the energy section, I'm going to do a nerdy uh, quote-unquote explanation as to why this expression represents this thing we call energy. Uh, you uh, will, if you want me to tell you what energy is, you're about to be really disappointed. So right now, energy is simply the value of that expression, and there are reasons for that that we'll just not even talk about right now. So uh, we're going to need this guy, and. The reason we're going to need this guy is because we are told that the collision is perfectly elastic. So that means that the kinetic energy before the collision is equal to the kinetic energy after the collision. This is only true, you may only use this relationship if you are explicitly told that the collision is perfectly elastic. You may not assume this is true. He said, underlined. Now, the other relationship we're going to need is the conservation of momentum. So the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. This is always true. You may always use this relationship in any problem where there's an interaction between objects. Okay, so my heavy-handed um, statements aside, let's get on with it. So let's look at the energy situation. So before, the only moving object uh, was M1, and because kinetic energy involves V, if V is zero, there isn't any. So it's 1 half m1 v1 squared, or in our case, 1 half m1 has a mass of 8. It has a velocity of 3, which we square. So we've got 4 times 9, so we've got 36 joules, which is the number we saw in the simulation. So the uh, M2 has no kinetic energy, so it's just plus zero. So the initial kinetic energy is 36 joules. Uh, since we're on the initial world, let's talk about momentum. So the initial momentum. So here we have it's M1 V1 plus M2 V2. So 8 times 3 plus zip because V2 is not moving. So we have 24 kilogram meters per second uh, of units of momentum, and that's all there is. Okay, so now we go to the world of after. So after, well, that's what we're gonna figure out. Okay, now we know from the simulation basically what happens we have a large mass, a mass hitting a larger mass, and so there's some rebound. So even though we don't have to know, I'm just gonna underline, even though we don't have to know this stuff for drawing the diagram, 
Okay, so this is after. For drawing the diagram, it's nice to get things in the right direction. So we've got M1, which is unchanged. And we know from the simulation that it's going this way. Okay, so now we get into the nightmare of symbols. Because I've got um, V1 before and V1 after. And I didn't do anything there. So I'm just going to write uh, V1 final here. And you'll just have to see how it's done in your class. So M2, now common sense tells us M2 must be moving to the right. That would be a very weird world if this thing hit this thing. And because this is not nailed down, it didn't move to the right. So we can pretty confidently do that. So we've got V's two final velocity, which we don't know, and M2 is 16. So the kinetic energy now is here and here. So it's 1 half. M1 is 8. V1 final, we don't know. And we get to square it. And then we have 1 half m2 is 16 and we have v2 whoops v2 final and we get to square it so that's the kinetic energy of m1 the kinetic energy of m2 uh, you'll be really depressed to see that there are two unknowns and they're squared yes it's this bad Okay, so that's the energy situation after and the momentum situation. So we have M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. So we have 8 and we don't know what that is. And we have 16 and we don't know what that is. But we do know, okay, so that's the final momentum which you can't read. All right, so we have expressions for the, f for the f final meaning, the kinetic energy after the collision and the momentum after the collision. Okay, now here's where our equations come from. Okay, because it's perfectly elastic, then the kinetic energy, the total kinetic energy before the collision, 36, equals the total kinetic energy after the collision, this mess. Oh, and I should have gone, well, I'll simplify this as we go. So the kinetic energy relationship is 36 equals, okay, so let's, half of 8 is 4. Okay, so I am going to put, I'm just going to put V1 here because the F is just, I don't need it. So this V1 means this guy, not that guy. Um... If I'm being clever, I actually use a different script. So I'll probably do that in the next problem. I'll try and be a little better. All right. So here, uh, the kinetic energy of the second mass is half of 16, 8, and then V2F squared. And I'm just going to write that as V2 squared. Remember, these subscripts, you don't calculate with them. They just distinguish between the velocity of object 1 as opposed to the velocity of object 2. Okay, so that's the kinetic energy relationship. And the momentum relationship is 20, oops, 24 units of momentum. So at, that's before. After, it's 8 V1s plus 16 V2s. And if, I'm, if this is driving you crazy, just put little Fs there but you just have to keep copying them over and over again okay so this is why this is not fun we have two equations two unknowns and worse it's quadratic because these guys are squared so unless it's our lucky day this is not going to be fun to solve well this problem is rigged and if you're in high school or first year university where else would you be if you're watching this 
probably many of the questions will be rigged so that it's not so terrifying to do the calculation. So this one is set up that way. So we'll notice that every constant has a, can be divided by 4. So I'm just going to divide through by 4. So I'm going to get 9 equals v1 squared plus 2v2 two squared. And here, everything is divided by 8. So I'm just going to divide by 8. So we'll get 3 equals v1 plus 2v2. Two two. All right, so now we have to bite the bullet. Um, we're going to have to sub solve uh, for the easiest variable to solve for, which is definitely v1. So let's do that right now. So v1 equals 3 minus 2 v2. So what we have to do now is we have to dump this expression that's equal to v1 into the first equation where the v1 is, and then we get to square it. Very exciting. So we have 9. So v1, we now know is that. 3 minus 2v2, we get to square it, and then we get to add the 2v2 squared. So uh, we're squaring this binomial, as your math teacher would say. So just remember that a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Just much quicker if you just memorize that. So, because I'm desperate to conserve space, uh, so this is going to be 3 squared is 9 minus that times that doubled. So 6, 12, V2, and then plus uh, that guy squared. So 4, V2 squared. So that's the squared binomial. And then we add 2, V2 squared. So we simplify that. So we've got 9 equals... 9 minus 12v2 plus 6v2 squared. And now we get our first break. We've got constant of 9 on both sides, which we subtract. And I'll just write this the other way. 6v2 squared minus 12v2. And we now can uh, everybody thing can be divided by six so zero divided by six is zero this is v2 squared this is 2v2 two and this is easily factored so we get v2 and then we get v2 minus two by the way do not divide through by v2 v2 is a variable if you divide through by v2, you'll be throwing one of the values of v2 away. It might be the value you want. So don't divide through by variables. Factor. And then we use the great mathematical truth that if the product of two quantities is 0, one or maybe both of them are 0. So that means that we can conclude v2 might be 0, or v2 minus 2 might be 0, or they both might be 0. We have to decide. So this guy implies that v2 is equal to 2. Now remember, my v2 here is supposed to be final. I just was too lazy to write it down. So if we go back to look at the physics side of things, we step out of the math world, we have to ask ourselves, ooh, it's already here. We have to ask ourselves, does it make sense that V2 final is 0? Well, that doesn't make any sense because we whapped it and it's not nailed down. It has to be moving to the right. So V2 is not 0. So it must be 2 meters per second. And it's positive moving to the right. That's all good. Okay. So this is, I don't know if this is going to happen all the time, but this is going to happen where you get... Your math delivers up two perfectly correct mathematical results, but one of them doesn't make any sense in the physics. So we're going to reject that guy and 
accept that one. So now that we know what V2 is, V1 is over here. Remember, this should be really, we should have a little F for final here. So V1 final is 3 minus 2v2 final. Sorry, my check mark looks like a v. That's not very good, is it? All right, and so 3 minus 4 is negative 1 meters per second. So that negative means that the mass 1 moves to the left, which is, I go look at the simulation, that's what it did. It's great. So uh, our picture here is correct. That's not necessarily always going to be true, but we lucked out this time. And our values agree with the simulation. So that's how you handle a elastic collision calculation. And uh, it wasn't as bad as it could have been because we got this happy mathematical cancellation of constants, removal of constants, which gave us something that was easy to factor, and hence we could easily get the uh, solution. So the next, I'm going to do one more example that isn't going to be so nice, but you need to see it, and, uh, and then that'll be that. But I'm going to put that on the next uh, video, because this one's already getting too long. So if you can't find that on YouTube, then just go to youcanlearnthis.com and look under the energy elastic collision section and you'll find the next example video. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Remember, if you want to say thanks, then go to youcanlearnthis.com and buy me a coffee. See you next time.